imagine? It's 1400 years ago. It's the night of Ashura. You see people leaving in their hundreds and thousands from the camp of Imam al Hussein. You turn and look at Imam al Hussein, you see sadness and sorrow in his face. In that moment, you, Abbas, decided to stay and be the 73rd companion of Imam al Hussein. Now, the morning of Ashura has come. The Imam says to you, it's up to you to help me in any way you want. Whatever fits, wherever you want to be, it's your choice. Where would you go and volunteer yourself in service? How would you aid the Imam on the day of Ashura? Some will say, I'll help Abu Fadl retrieve water for the children of Ramah Hussein. Some will say, I will stand in front of Imam Hussein when they were doing prayer and take all the arrows. Some will say, I will stand in front of Bibi Sakina and stop that person ripping off the earring from her ear. Some will say, I will stand and defend Sayyidah Zainab and not allow her to be slapped. Where would you be? That's a, that's a question I've never even thought about. Um, but I've always envisaged that I would have wanted to be the person that would want to go and... I mean, it's said that when Imam Hussein came and said his final farewell to Sayyidah Sajjad alayhi salam, Imam Sajjad describes his father looking like someone who's just covered from head to toe in blood and his back is bent and it's said that Imam Hussein from the first moment of the day of Ashura all the way until the end he was one that was going out to pick up the bodies and I would want to be the one to go and help him pick up the bodies so his back is less bent when he meets his final end. Suppose you just finished work today, you drive back home, your mom, your dad, your family, they open the door, they let you in. You see your family is in a frantic state. You see everyone running around gathering food, fruits, drinks, etc. You, you ask your dad, what's going on? Have we got guests today? They turn around and say to you, and they say, a man has come to see you. And he is waiting for you in the living room. So you go to the living room, you open the door, and you see there sitting Imam al Hussein. What would you want him to say to you in that moment? From day one, from from the moment that that I first learned who Imam Hussein was, this has always been my dream to, to finally meet Imam Hussein and his salam. I think one of the things that I would want him to say, one of the major things I would want him to say, is that all this work that we're doing to spread his mission, all the all the the tireless hours, the sleepless nights that we've spent, is is accepted in his way, and that. What we've done is given some solace to the heart of Sayyidah Zahra Alaihi alayha. But I think obviously seeing Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam, I would probably be speechless for a very, very long time and just just want to weep. You know, it's, it's not something that, that the heart can take to see Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam, I don't think. Now you have sat with him. And it's time to say your farewell. He's leaving your house. What would you, what would you do in that situation? What would you say to him before he goes? There's a, there's a lot that I'd, I would want to say 
to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam a lot of questions that that I would want to ask him. But I think it would it would suffice to say that I would want Imam al Hussein alayhi salam to to send my salam to his mother Sayyidah Fatima. So at the beginning, I asked you to imagine we was on the night of Ashura 1400 years ago. Then on the day of Ashura, how would you serve? Now knowing the events that took place then, it might be easy to say I would go and get the water of the Bufadil or go get the bodies with Imam Hussein or I would stand with the women and children in case someone came to hit them I would I would give my life fighting with Ali Al-Akbar with Imam Al-Qasim maybe or maybe going, going with Imam Hussein when he took Ali Al-Azghar to the, to the enemies now I am asking you today in this day and age what have you done for our 12th Imam? What would you like to do? And what do you think he deserves from us now? What advice would you give to the children? I think one of the main lessons, one of the main things that I would try to put into my life and to teach my future, my, my, my daughter, my children, I think that's probably one of the first places I would start is by, by educating our children about the importance of serving the Ahlul Bayt, about who the Ahlul Bayt are and completely committing our entire life or committing my upbringing of my children to eventually serving the 12th Imam Ajallah when he does reappear. One of the things that, that I would say to my children is, is that Imam Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura taught us a few things. One of the first things that he taught us was that only through destruction can you achieve salvation. So in order to, to smell the fragrance of the roses, your hand must learn how to hold onto the thorns. He taught us that forgiveness from the story of Hur, forgiveness is so much more bitter but yet so much more sweeter at the same time than vengeance because vengeance is very easy. Forgiveness is a lot more difficult. But finally, that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, you know, he was in a very unique position. On one side, there were the bodies of his loved ones and his children, and on the other side was his family inside the tents, staying in hope that he would come back safely. So he was in a unique position between destruction and hope. And one of the main things that as he was passing away, he passed on was remaining confident in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very easy for us to, to doubt, you know, doubt God in, in many levels, you know, is what is happening right for me? Is this something, you know, if God was truly just, etc, etc, etc. But one of the main lessons I've learned from Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam is to always remain confident that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over you. And so before doubting God, doubt your doubts. Oh